Hello everyone, welcome to National Signing Day on GoLeopards.com and the Lafayette Sports Network. I'm Gary Laubach along with John Leone. We will be talking, obviously, to both of our head coaches, the women's basketball coach, Kia Damon Olson, and then we'll chat with Fran O'Hanlon as we take a look at all the new guys and girls and women who are coming to Lafayette College to play some basketball. And Kia Damon Olson is with us to start the show. You picked up five new uh, young ladies to come here and play some basketball. My first question is, some people are going to say, how does she get five? Explain how you get five. Well, um, in women's basketball, we have a, an allotment of 15 full scholarships mm -hmm. that you can have. And um, we have three seniors this year, and we have a roster of 13. So once those guys graduate, that'll knock us down to 10. So we have the ability to go out and sign five players. and. Uh, Given how injuries have gone last couple of years, you know, we want to make sure we have plenty of bodies in the state. Speaking of that, we had somebody hurt just setting up for our program here today. <laughs> so that's how things do go here at Lafayette College. Kia, you, you got players from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, New York, and Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about the, the process of, of going out and finding all of these young women. Well, I'm pretty sure you guys can appreciate how prominent AAU is um, in this current climate with, with basketball. Mm -hmm. So as you travel around nationally to the different tournaments, um, we obviously want to make sure we're canvassing our home area region, you know, very strongly, but then also willing to branch out with our, you know, academic prowess. We can go kind of wherever we want and attract student athletes, and we were very fortunate to come up um, with five different players, but five players that would really help us kind of fulfill the vision that mm -hmm. we have for what the team will look like moving forward. Um, but it's a, it's a process that I would say kind of it's like a two, maybe even a three-year cycle where you're starting that far in advance, identifying um, and monitoring the growth and development of the players throughout, and then you start to build relationships with them and their families, and then once you get them on campus and some of those things, it kind of takes on a life of its own. It probably is a little painful at times because there's some you don't get, yeah. and then obviously the exuberance of <laughs> yeah. some that you really want and you do get. Yeah, it's, it's like that every year. You know, Every coach in the country hears no at least once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no question about that. Yeah. Uh, John, you've been through the process, so you know what she's talking yeah, about. Yeah, you know, the thing that uh, occurred to me just listening to you a, a moment ago, Kia, um, AAU has become uh, the, the, the primary avenue uh, by which coaches go to see players. Um, this is a nuance, but uh, in the old days when I was coaching, I always liked to watch a player interact with his or her team. Correct. Um, do you get a chance to see them in their high school environment? Because sometimes the AAU environment versus the high school environment can be different and it might be able to tell you something about a player's personality. Yes, actually we see both. Um, and we may first identify someone at a younger age via the AAU, but when we're talking about tracking, some of that is following them with their high school teams and watching their progression, we'll get out. You know, I think we have like 112 evaluation days that we can mm -hmm. do, use mm -hmm. throughout the season. And so we're, we use every day that we have available to go out and evaluate, you know, talent throughout our season. And I'm sure that's a big part of it too, uh, kind of gauging. There's a certain uh, culture that has existed here over the years, but then another certain kind of culture that you've tried to establish within your team. I'm sure that's a big part of, of, of what you look for in a player, how they, not just their skill set basketball-wise, right. but how they interact. No, that's a big piece of it. When you're in an intimate environment like we have here, um, you're going to interact with professors, um, staff members. You're going to interact with the media, really everyone. And you want kids that can feel comfortable in that space and that you're comfortable sending out when they have to be representatives of the program and of you to engage with you know, all of your constituents. Terrific. All right, let's take a look at uh, recruit number one. She'll wear number 23 as you take a look at some of the highlights. Her name is Michaela Andrews, another Michaela added to <laughs> our roster. She's out of Neptune, New Jersey, St. Rose High School, 5'10". Uh, she is a guard. Before we look at the video, tell us a little bit about her. You know what, Michaela's going to be pretty dynamic. She is a kid that is a two-way player. You hear that expression, mm -hmm, we talk mm -hmm. about the pros quite a bit. But she's going to impact what we do in transition, um, her ability to score off the dribble. Um, she's added the ability to shoot you know, long-range threes. Defensively, she's going to be a menace, You know, just continuing to help us get up in pressure and press a little bit more. All right, well, without further ado, let's take a look at Michaela in action. Michaela Andrews out of New Jersey. First of all, comes from a terrific high school program. I mean, uh, Neptune area um, is, 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 uh, is well known for its basketball. What I like about her, Kia, is uh, her versatility. When I first saw her, she reminded me of 
the current Michaela, Michaela <laughs> Wilson. You and I talked about her a moment ago and how much she's improved, but I think this Michaela has a little more uh, versatility to her game, uh, uh, but she's got, a, like you say, a, a difficult matchup. There you see her off the bounce and her ability to see the floor and make the players around her better. Uh, she's physical, she's athletic, and I love that. Watch the step back jump shot right here. I mean, this is really, when you talk about positionless players, uh, what is she? I mean, is she a two, is she a three? Is she physical enough to, to, to go small and play a, a four spot? But I think her athleticism and her strength uh, will help you defensively as well, Kia. Absolutely, absolutely. Tell us uh, a little bit about her as a, as a person. You obviously got to know her a little bit. Oh, you know what? Michaela's a great young lady. Um, comes from a really strong family. She's uh, outgoing, and the more you get to know her, the more you get to see that, that bubbly personality. But she's aggressive, she's competitive, and she wants to win and wants to be challenged. And that that's probably something I can say about each and every one of the young ladies that you know will be joining the program. You yeah. saw her in a moment, I'm sorry, Gary, mm -hmm. but you saw her a moment ago go up and get, you know, lots of kids can rebound the balls that come to them, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a special talent to go get the ball. That's oh, what yeah. you wanted to rebound. We, I saw her go get that one. The other thing that stood out to me, she's got great hands in traffic. Mm -hmm. She catches the ball well and can finish around the bucket. Yeah, you know, her dad played basketball so uh, at St. Peter's, so she has uh, some good genes when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she is a kid that I've been really impressed with over the course of time because she initially was just a really good athlete and has added the skills each year. And that's why I knew that, you know, this kid's not even close to tapping her ceiling. And if we can get her in, continue to work with her, there's no telling what she's able to do. Well, through the magic of uh, the internet, we were able to actually sit down and chat with Michaela. So uh, here is Michaela. And Michaela, tell us why you chose Lafayette. Um, I chose Lafayette College because um, I really love the coaches. They like made me, they helped me visualize how I can achieve my goals and like what steps I need to take to achieve them. Um, and they really felt like they, you know, that they wanted me to go there. Um, and I like the campus and the town that it's in. Um, so yeah. Being from New Jersey, did that influence your decision to stay close to home? It was um, very important to me because I want my I want my parents and my family and like friends to be able to see me when they can. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoy having my family and friends watch me play and be able to. And what set Lafayette College apart? Well, distance and. Um, what they had to offer, the um, the coaches, you know, um, like I said before, helped me realize that I can achieve my goals and that um, the campus is beautiful, and I just I felt at home there. All right, so we will now move on to uh, recruit number two. It is Amaya, I think, is that yes, the way she pronounces Amaya. it? Amaya Douglas out of Coatesville. Pennsylvania, but she didn't play for Coatesville High School, did she? No, she's at West Town. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about West Town. It's not even a, a high school I'm familiar with. Well, West Town's a, a private school, mm -hmm. um, and so she she plays against a lot of high-level talent, um, travels nationally to compete in tournaments. Um, a lot of their sports do extremely well. Their men's boys basketball team, um, nationally ranked, high-caliber players, you know, women's basketball. Um, as well, so she's coming from a, a very strong basketball background. She's six, six feet tall, so she's a little bit of a tweener for yep. you. She's going to be a tweener. She's a soccer player slash basketball player, but um, she's going to definitely add a continued versatility to our front court. Um, and with her quickness and athleticism, she'll be able to step out and guard guards as well. 12 points a game, six rebounds a game, good numbers and a good program. Yep. Uh, that's, I'm sure, what you were looking for. Let's take a look. John and uh, Keel will take a look at Amaya Douglas in action. She'll yeah. wear number, uh, what number? Huh? Oh, the quiet's right. The video quality on this is not real good. So we've circled her every time. John? Yeah, well, she's long, uh, Gary, for a, a tweener. Uh, she can score around the lane, which I really like about her. But then she can step outside as well. So to Kia's point, this is a versatile player who's going to fit nicely into the kind of system that Kia wants to run. Uh, you know, Kia, uh, I just like the the number of different positions you might be able to plug uh, Ma uh, Maya into. Talk mm -hmm. about that a little bit. Yeah, so I, I see Amaya as being someone who can play both both forward positions. Um, and as we continue to develop and refine our game, maybe even step her out to a two. 
Um, and so if we want to play small ball, she can play a four. And if we want to be big, you know, she'll, she'll be that powerful wing. But one of the things that we wanted to get was more physicality and power in our, our wing position and not sacrifice the speed and the skill. There you see the three-point shot right there, her ability to spot up. And again, she seems to know how to move with the basketball. Here you're going to see a little bit of a kind of a pick and roll here. No, I'm sorry, this is off the dribble. Very nicely done, a little mid-range mm -hmm. game and that speaks to her versatility she can step out hit the three you got a player and then she's got the ability to put it on the floor and get around the rim and she's an underrated passer and that's one thing that you may not see a ton in the video but she passes the ball extremely well which gets me excited we want to get more assists to get more points yeah here you see a little dribble handoff right there and that's what you were talking about this is a great pass right here off the dribble moves well without the ball the catch and the finish in traffic so uh, a lot to be uh, a lot a lot to look forward to with 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 that young lady oh, absolutely absolutely and she's obviously special uh, only special kids come to lafayette college <laughs> and she, she took some service trips to puerto rico oh, yeah. to help out down mm -hmm. there uh, it sounds like a terrific young lady. Um, Amaya's a great kid, a great, kind of has a humanitarian spirit, loves to help um, in any way that she can, is willing to open herself up, and like I said before, in an environment like we have at Lafayette, you can't have too many kids like that. We did have a chance to chat with Amaya also via Skype, and uh, the first question for her was the same. Tell us why you chose Lafayette, Amaya. Well, my main reason for choosing Lafayette was mostly the community and like the team. Um, when I went on my visits, I loved the campus. It was really pretty. And then when I met the coaches and um, the team, it, they're just so nice. And then like you can tell that they like genuinely cared about Lafayette and like they enjoyed going there. And it just seemed like a really good environment to be around. What for you set Lafayette College apart? Um, Lafayette was mostly different for me because of like the academics for one was really good. Um, I saw how many there's a few students from my high school who went there and they speak about how it challenges them academically and kind of just as a community member. Um, and also just like the team itself was really good. They, um, they definitely push each other and the environment's good. So, so like that. And obviously coming to Lafayette, you must have academic aspirations. What are those? Um, I'm mostly looking at like sociology or kind of history. Um, for a while, I was looking at law. I don't really know if I exactly want to do that anymore, but I'm not really sure. I'm kind of willing to like give it a little bit of a try. But I mess, met I met with the um, um, international relations um, head, and she was really nice and talked about some of the programs and how like you know I choose major till later. But I'm definitely looking more into like history and sociology. All right, that is recruit number two. Now we move on to Kayla Drummond. She's got good size, six mm -hmm. two. First question is, how'd you find her? She's out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> well, you know, AAU brings everyone. Yeah, everybody together, <laughs> right? Everyone together. So um, we first saw uh, Kayla last summer um, competing in some AAU events uh, down in Washington, D.C. Um, and then we just became um, more interested in her the more we kind of did more research and digging. She actually is really good friends with Naomi. Their paths ah, crossed in okay. um, some of their, you know, parochial school days. And so just those little connections started to add up to be big connections and thus we got to this day. And again, good size, John, and we're going to see that size in motion. She'll wear number 21 here on the video. Here is Kayla Drummond. Yeah, again, I, I really like the way she moves around for a, for a, a kid her size. She's 6'2". Her strength is around the basket. I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kia, but I think she shoots it well enough to keep the defense honest. Mm -hmm. But really, in the lane, around the bucket, she is quick enough uh, to have it. There you see her ability to shoot downtown. But she's quick, she's quick enough to give bigs a problem. Um, and but uh, uh, but strong enough uh, that if a guard guards her, she's got an advantage there. So a lot of ways to, to u utilize her abilities. No, absolutely. You know, Kayla is a young lady who does a great job of carving out space if she's in the low block. And one thing that stuck out to me right away is if you get her the ball, she converts. And you can, you know, left hand, right hand, it doesn't matter. But you can't have enough people who can make layups um, against, mm -hmm, against mm -hmm. contact in particular. Yeah, and in, in, in your system in particular, I mean, there's a way for you to, you know, when you hear about post players, you, you, you envision the 6'2", six, 6'3", six, mm -hmm. kid with back to the basket, but with a, a particular matchup, you can post up 
a, a kid like her yep. uh, on a guard if Absolutely. that's the matchup. So a lot of versatility. Yep. We, we always are hunting after versatility. And as the game is going, most of the bigs are stepping away from the basket. And you actually need that space. So you want them to be able to be reliable shooters, you know, away from the basket. And, you know, 15, 17, even out to the three-point line, that's going to be an area where Kayla's going to be able to do some damage. But we're not going to sacrifice that for what she does inside. Well, we talked we talk with Kayla also. And Kayla, we asked you the same question we were asking the other recruits. Why did you choose Lafayette? Um, I think one of the reasons I decided to choose Lafayette is um, I felt really connected with the coaching staff. and I truly felt like it would be the perfect fit for me to bring my basketball talents to the next level. And I feel as though Lafayette will help develop me and bring me to that collegiate level and um, help me improve as a player. Kayla, why did you choose Lafayette on the academic side? And do you have a major in mind already? Um, I, def I decided to choose a Lafayette on the academic side because um, I felt as though they would be the perfect fit for me for my major, which is pre-law. Um, on my official visit, I met with the academic advisor, and he really made me feel confident and um, made me feel like Lafayette would be the perfect place for me to continue my academic journey. Um, he had all the answers to my questions, and I really felt that um, I would be happy, and Lafayette was the perfect fit for me on the academic side as well. What are you looking forward to the most during your senior season in high school playing basketball and then obviously coming to Lafayette? I think I'm most looking forward to just hopefully getting another championship with my teammates. A lot of them I've been playing with since I was like 14. So um, I think it would be an amazing way just to finish up my high school basketball career with another championship with um, some of the girls that I've had the opportunity to grow with as a basketball player and as a person as well. Um, my teammates are like my sisters, so um, I'm really blessed to be able to end my um, high school career with them, and um, I'm just hoping that we can go for another undefeated season. All right, we move on to Ashley Evans. Ashley Evans is out of New Hampshire. Lawrence Academy, obviously another one of the private schools. Yep. So uh, again, I, I assume AAU uh, yep. showed you Ashley. AAU was a big driver um, in discovering Ashley. Um, she played in a prominent uh, EYBL circuit early on and then you know, transitioned into the Blue Star, Blue mm -hmm. Star circuit mm -hmm. um, last year. So you know, we got a chance to follow her, probably the longest of all of our recruits. Um, and develop a great relationship with, with Ashley and her family. She has great numbers shooting wise, 45% from three point land, 57% field goal percentage, which is terrific, 72% free throw percentage. This young lady can shoot. Yes, yes. We, uh, we, like I said before, we love shooting yes. kicks. Um, <laughs> people who can do damage inside, but also can create space so the lane's not always so clogged um, when you're trying to do different things offensively. But her versatility, I don't want to say she's Natalie because she's not, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of similarities um, in terms of how they play. Um, and we will continue to try to do different things to set not only Ashley up, but the other post players to be successful. If you're similar to Natalie, that's pretty good basketball. <laughs> Let's take a look at Ashley in action. Yeah, I, you know, one thing about a shooter, you don't, the ball doesn't have to go in to know this kid can shoot the ball. And I stopped the film right here and said, this kid can shoot the ball. And how about the high-low? She's got a good basketball IQ. Her, her size allows her the vision to see around the bucket. You know, the one thing is, look, she's not, she doesn't strike me as a terrific athlete, but she's smart. And you know, Kia, I've watched your players now for a couple of years, they get better. You and I talked before we came on the air about Michaela, about Naomi, and they're getting better. The ceiling on this kid, because she can do that, mm -hmm. uh, is is limitless. Uh, and, and footwork around the basket, you can you can work on those things. It's tough to teach a kid to shoot. It is. It is. Um, I will say this about Ashley. I think she's deceptively athletic. Um, you have to really kind of watch her, and she explodes and she does things. You go, whoa! I, di I didn't know she could do that. Um, but a kid at her size who can go inside and outside, she can handle the ball. You know, those are some of the skills that you did not necessarily see in the video, but that are definitely emerging there. So she, she's going to be a problem. That's great news. And I think the term sometimes athleticism is overused, maybe mis misused mm -hmm. at times because uh, a big kid like, uh, like, like, like Ashley, who, who has good footwork, 
that's an athletic move too, and uh, I, I, I liked her around the basket as well as shooting the shooting the deep. Yeah, one of the big adjustments most big kids will have uh, to college is just the speed. Yeah. Um, and Ashley came and watched this practice in the preseason, huh. and I go, "What do you think?" She goes, "I'm going to need to start running a lot." <laughs> I go, "Yeah, yeah. I, I highly recommend that." Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like a big that can get up and down the floor. Yes. We did chat with Ashley, uh, and Ashley, tell us why you chose Lafayette. So I initially chose Lafayette just because of the campus itself reminds me of a lot of the prep school I go to in Massachusetts now. And when I went on my official visit and kind of met with all the academic advisors, the coaches, and saw like the community, the community itself, like it like live, it really just showed me that like it's not all about athletics, but it's more about like academics. And that's what I was really looking for in a school, like a high academic institute. Where I could really get my degree, but also like play the sport that I love, like competitively at a D1 level. Now that you're looking forward to it, what excites you the most about joining the Lafayette College women's basketball team? Seeing what the team has done so far and what Kia Damon has done specifically with them is amazing. I think um, they have a high ceiling, and I just can't wait to see what they do with it, especially with the new class that they brought in last year. Um, and to see what the girls in my class will do will, will be amazing. And when you come to Lafayette, we want to know your academic aspirations. What are those? So I think, I'm, I, think I want to major in bio. I've kind of been set on that for a couple of years now, and I wanted to major in bio and then maybe go to PA school after I graduate from Lafayette for two years and then see what happens after that. All right, that's four of the five. We move to Alana Lombardi, a 5'10 guard out of Briarcliff, New York. Averaged 17 points a ball game. Uh, this sounds like the kind of guard you really like to have in your program. You know, Alana and I clicked from the very beginning. Um, she is a fierce competitor. Um, and in addition to you know, being competitive, her skills, I love her speed. Um, she's able to shoot the ball with range. Um, there isn't anything she's not willing to do to get a W, and I love that. All right, let's take a look at Alana Lombardi in action. She's wearing number 12. Well, as you watch uh, Alana, uh, what she said, because Coach Damon hit it right on the nose. The first thing that uh, jumps out at me is, is just her, uh, her competitive nature. Um, I love the fact uh, that, uh, you know, you could have an, uh, an all left-handed backcourt. Uh, you got already got Jess Booth here, and they're going to be fighting for that right side of the court so they can, you know, drive across the lane. Uh, but she is uh, a terrific defender as well as anything. There you see her ability to catch it and shoot it uh, downtown. But I just love the way she can create. She gets in the lane. Uh, and she can make good things happen uh, uh, and her defensive uh, abilities are, are outstanding key I think you're gonna love her being a uh, like a defensive catalyst again you have Jess Booth you still you know you still got uh, Nicole uh, you're gonna have some good quickness in the backcourt with uh, with a young lady like this yeah that's one that's one of the areas when we first arrived that we wanted to attack we wanted to have more size um, we wanted to have more length um, and more speed and athleticism and getting all of those things in your guard play makes you pretty dynamic. So when you're going on conference and even in conference and you're playing in lots of different styles, you can also counter that by throwing out different things that you want to do as well. Well, here's Alana Lombardi. We asked her why she chose Lafayette College. I chose Lafayette College because it was like from the get-go, from the moment I walked on campus, I felt like I had a connection with the campus and the coaches made me feel right at home right away. And um, it was academically exactly what I was looking for in terms of like everything I have to offer and majors. So I knew it was just like a perfect fit. Alana, what are your academic aspirations? Right now, I'm really interested in engineering. So I think that's what I'll be pursuing, maybe like civil engineering. But um, I also do like other things like English. So I'll see where that takes me. And tell us about your feeling coming here and playing for the Lafayette College women's basketball program. I'm really excited to just kind of get in there and start doing what um, I can do and just try to help out as much as I can. Um, I just want to like help the team be successful and 
do everything I can. Well, as you can tell, Kia, a terrific job. Uh, I'm sure you feel really good about this uh, new class coming in next year. Yeah, you know, we're pretty fortunate to be able to get the, the five young ladies that we have coming in. The staff did an unbelievable job in identifying the talent, addressing our needs, um, and, and helping to draw in, you know, high caliber, high character mm -hmm. and high caliber players. Yeah, actually, uh, the last young lady that we just talked to, uh, Ashley Lombardi, she plays the ukulele, so she'll be entertaining <laughs> also in the uh, well, she can in the locker room. Yeah, yeah, I know, Drew, Drew, that's, that's, that's right, exactly. Going. Well, very good. So we have entertainment many ways, not just on the <laughs> basketball floor. Kia, thanks so much for joining no us. Problem. We'll Thank see you. you the rest of the season for sure, and look forward to the next season already, John. Absolutely, it comes quickly, and uh, as I said before in the broadcast, it is the most wonderful time of the year. Next up, Coach Fran O'Hanlon and his new recruits on Lafayette signing day. Stay with us.